3440 by 1440, 120 hertz refresh rate and a beautiful IPS panel. This is what a lot of us have been waiting on for a while and with the last couple of days, I've been using the Alienware 3418DW and I'm convinced that it is the ultimate gaming monitor and let me show you why. This monitor possesses the trifecta of specifications with a high resolution of 3440 by 1440, a high refresh rate of 100 Hz, which is overclockable up to 120 Hz through the menu, and a beautiful IPS panel. Often monitors will do one of these things very well and be fairly average in the other two, but this monitor hits the sweet spot for all three. The curve is a little bit more aggressive to what we've seen from ASUS or Acer coming in at 1900R, but I did notice this to be much more comfortable to use than those. It's curved enough to improve gaming and workstation viewing angles, but not so much that it's going to affect critical photo and video editing. We're also getting Nvidia's G-Sync as well, which matches the frame rate from your GPU to your monitor's refresh rate so that we don't get any screen tearing when gaming and everything just looks buttery smooth. For adjustments, we're getting pretty much everything that we need with height adjustment up to 130 millimeters, tilt and also swivel. It's also incredibly well built and is very sturdy. It stays planted on your desk and you're not going to get any screen wobble at all when typing. Even when purposely trying to get it to wobble, the display was extremely rigid. A big plus from me here. In terms of I.O., the 3418DW has everything that you'd expect. A headphone jack, multiple USB 3.0 ports, including an upstream port, and of course we have HDMI and DisplayPort as well. Just make sure you're using that DisplayPort if you're going to be gaming and using G-Sync. Alright, some more info on the panel. We've got a grey to grey response time of 4 milliseconds, a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1, a colour depth of 8 bit, a brightness of 300 nits, an anti-glare coating and also 99% coverage of the sRGB color spectrum. So just as you would have guessed, this would make a killer monitor for photo and video editing as well with those specs. But before you do any of that, here are some calibration adjustments that I would recommend. Head over to tftcentral.com if you want to read more about these settings here because that's essentially where I've just sourced all of these from. Brightness, you're going to want to set between 35 and 75 depending on the lighting in your room. Leave contrast at 75 and then set the RGB values to 93, 93 and 100 respectively. You might also want to head over to the Nvidia control panel and turn down that gamma a little bit as it is a little bit high out of the box. With this model, there's no dead pixels or annoying backlight bleed, but I did notice that the top of the screen does gradually get darker towards the top edge. In gaming, you won't notice this at all, but when you're doing basic work with web pages, this is pretty noticeable and a little bit disappointing as well. Honestly though, I'd prefer this shadowing at the top over backlight bleed any day of the week, but I'm interested to hear what you guys think of this as well. And lastly, the white balance of the display has a little bit of shift as well. It's slightly cooler on the left hand side and a little bit warmer on the right hand side. And I don't necessarily think this is an issue with the panel itself, but instead of the viewing angles, because it is such a wide display and this becomes evidence when looking at the display from different angles. To most people though, this will be pretty much unnoticeable, but to content creators like myself who are constantly checking their white balance for color correction, this can be a bit of an issue. Just refrain from using the far left and far right edges of the monitor for color correction and you'll be fine, as the middle of the screen has absolutely no issues. We're not getting any built-in speakers, but for most people using this monitor, that's not really going to be a deal breaker. I'd highly recommend a solid set of headphones if you're going to be using a display like this to add to that immersion. In terms of design and branding, I am a huge fan of how this monitor looks. To the average Joe, the Acer X34 Predator and the Alienware 3418DW look identical. They're both 34 inch ultra wide monitors with a dark grey finish and both have a very similar stand, but the difference is in the details. The chin bezel is much thinner here and doesn't extrude out from the rest of the panel and the branding here is just perfect, just Alienware. Even from the back, the monitor looks stunning. We're getting subtle RGB illumination with these three lines. And on the top right, we have the Alienware logo. Other locations for the RGB are on the power button and also below the logo here as well, which can be toggled on and off through a touch sensitive panel, which I think is pretty neat. You can toggle all of them off and on though through the OSD as well, and also change the color with up to 20 options. Now, being an ultra wide monitor, you're going to have that nice wide field of view while gaming in that 21 by 9 aspect ratio. And for those of you who are a little on the fence about ultra wide gaming, let me just say that it is totally worth it. 
Ultra wide monitors pull you into the game by increasing your field of view. And besides making this a much more immersive experience, in some games that wider field of view will actually give you an advantage as well. Of course, it's not all about gaming though, and one of the main reasons I moved to an ultra wide monitor in the first place was for video editing and to really stretch that timeline and workspace over a single view. It really is a solid investment for productivity. All right, now the general drawback from these larger ultra wide gaming monitors is that the refresh rate is usually cut down a little bit, usually around 100 Hertz from what we've seen from Acer and Asus from last year. Uh, the Alienware is different though. We are getting a 20% increase over that, landing us at 120 Hertz. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking 20 Hertz, you know, big deal, nothing to write home about, right? But I can tell you from comparing the two that the extra 20 FPS in gaming does go a long way and is definitely noticeable, especially when you're doing quick turning movements. I think the best way that I can explain this is that with the 100 Hertz refresh rate on the Acer X34 Predator, you feel like it's almost there in terms of refresh rate, but not quite enough. Almost to the point where I actually picked up a second uh, 165 Hertz display just for competitive gaming uh, with titles like Battlefield 1 and PUBG and stuff like that. Uh, but with the Alienware model, you're not getting that at all. You just simply don't think twice about it. It really is enough. Smooth, fast gaming, just buttery smooth. You don't think twice about the refresh rate. And after this, I'm convinced that 120 Hertz is the sweet spot for monitors like this. Now, driving all of those pixels is not going to be easy, but it is doable. I've been using a GTX 1080 Ti, and I wasn't able to play at ultra settings for most titles, but I was able to hit that 120 hertz limit on medium or high settings, depending on the game. If you're buying a monitor like this though, then I highly recommend investing in at least a GTX 1080 as well, because powering all of those frames is not easy. Overclocking to 120 hertz was no problem at all on this model, which by the way was actually borrowed from a very generous subscriber who lived nearby. All you have to do is wake up the OSD by pressing any of the buttons underneath, then press the second button from the right to open the options menu, and then enable overclock underneath the first tab. Now wake up the OSD again by pressing any of the buttons underneath, and then press the second button from the left to open the refresh rate, and push it all the way up to 120 hertz you'll get a message asking you to reboot. Just select yes and you should be good to go. Make sure you enable the refresh rate and also G-Sync in the Nvidia control panel as well. The OSD is really solid too, something that we've been missing from previous models with six buttons underneath the right hand side, not including the power button. And from left to right, they are the color presets, the overclocked refresh rate, dark stabilizer, which basically lightens up the shadow detail a bit, but I just left this on zero. Brightness and contrast, which is a huge plus in my opinion. The fact that you can easily change your brightness throughout the day with a couple clicks is really cool. And then we have the options menu and then finally the cancel or back button. Let's take a look at the options menu real quick. We've got a lot of different settings here, but I'll just save you guys the time and cover the important stuff. If you head into the first tab, which is titled game by using the arrow keys at the bottom, you'll be able to display the refresh rate of the monitor, which will show up in the top left hand side of the screen. To make this a little easier to enable, you can save this as a shortcut by going down to personalize and then selecting one of the shortcut keys to overwrite. I'm going to change the color presets to toggle the frame rate, which is in game mode. Now that first button will display the frame rate of your games on and off with a simple click of a button. For response times, you're going to want to leave this on normal, as with the fast and super fast option, you will begin to see some blur and motion artifacts, so I'd recommend leaving that on normal. You can also change the colors, as I mentioned before, in AlienFX lighting, which is pretty cool, and also enable spectrum, which fades through the whole color spectrum. Now, with all the specs out of the way, let's talk about the gaming experience because that's what most of you are going to buy this monitor for. And right away, I'm going to say that in terms of immersion and just feeling connected with the games that I was playing, this was the best experience that I've had. Everything about this monitor in terms of a gaming monitor is perfect right now. 21 by nine is just amazing, both for gaming and work and smaller 27 inch 16 by nine screens do not even compare. You guys know I'm really picky when it comes to design, but the design language of this monitor, in my opinion, is everything that you'd want for a clean looking gaming and work setup. The look is very sharp, the RGB is subtle, and the gray finish looks exceptional. The bezels are nice and slim, and overall, it's just really refreshing to see a nice clean design like this. 
To save you guys the pain, I've left out the price tag until now and that's because if I had anything to complain about, it would be that this monitor is not cheap and will set you back around $1,500 US. Right now though, Dell have a sale on and it's going for around $1,149 US, which is still expensive but an awesome deal in my opinion and these deals seem to occur every couple months or so, so definitely be on the lookout for that. And I know a lot of you will be thinking about getting the Acer X34 Predator instead as it is a little bit cheaper in comparison. And I will have a full comparison coming up in a few days between the two, directly comparing pretty much every single spec that there is. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on that. For now though, a huge thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think of this beast of a monitor in the comments below. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.